The Book of Remembrance of Moses, the Tablet of Gabriel, Chapter 17. An account of the Lord coming and explaining the interim between the third and fourth flames, and of the birth of the fourth flame and the ministry of Ben Elam and Gokar Harem, the fourth. The Lord's counsel to the righteous in these last days on how they should conduct themselves and proceed in their task to shine forth the fourth flame of Anarchist. And it came to pass that after viewing all that transpired with the third flame, much of it having already been viewed by Urim and written, we once again assembled before the Lord in anticipation of what he may reveal to us, considering we now are at the time of the fourth and final flame of the love of Anarchist. Reference number 313. Eighteen people were in attendance. And I looked and I saw down the hill in front of me the Lord coming, and he has a shepherd's crook in his hand. And he feels so familiar now in this vision with his gentle spirit. And I was anxious about this session because it was about us. And in particular, because I had been called a son of redemption by him in an earlier part of the vision and in my heart. It seemed like the hardest session with the Aram that I had ever faced. But his spirit and presence drove away all my apprehensions, and I was prepared to listen carefully and transmit every word he said to the scribes, and they recorded it all accurately. And the Lord was before me, and he said, I have come here this day to teach, because you and all the righteous are the sheep of my flock, and you have received instructions from on high, all during this vision coming with the tablet of Gabriel, who is my beloved, and he is the archangel of the east. And up to this point in the vision, I have opened up to you things past, with the holy people coming down from the first flame, anchored in the edge of eternity, and on through the second flame with its four sons of salvation, and then on with the four sons of redemption, who brought the third flame into its fullness. But now I am your shepherd in the present moments of your walk in the task to bring the fourth flame of the love of my father during ensuing generations. And I would inform you somewhat of that which transpired between the third and fourth flame so my people can understand the circumstances that will arise during their ministry of service to fulfill the vision of Israel. And the Lord said, each of the four flames of the love of my father have had to be brought about under different conditions in the world. The first flame that was anchored on the edge of eternity was set in motion by our first parents, and it burned brightly from its first inception. And in that light, the people of Mayim lived out their lives in rich purity of soul, and thereby they were taken back to Eden, and the pathway back to Eden measured up to the expectations of my father. And by the circumstances of these early times, and by the power of our ancient people, those who dwelt in Mayim set righteousness in place for the duration of the earth. And all this occurred in the first great 70. And the people in those days did not know just what they had accomplished in their establishing righteousness, but they had set in place during the first seven generations, the definition of all 12 of the waymarks of the law and all seven foundations of Shabua, and also all 22 parameters of that which preserves the vision of Israel. Reference number 314. They established it with the living of their lives. Ezekiel formally articulated them. And this was because the righteous and the wicked developed the expressions of their agency separately. However, the conditions for the second flame arose in altogether more difficult circumstances because the righteous were now intermingled with the wicked or at least with those who were apathetic and dull of knowing. Thus, the righteous were compelled to find their way to still walk in the ancient holiness. Thus comes the covenant of Abraham, with all its aspects of peace and gentle living. And the covenant of Abraham was intended to set the behavior of the righteous for all peoples, because the righteous and the wicked would be intermingled for all the rest of the course of the earth. And the mother of Abraham, despite the terrible conditions in which she lived, lit the second flame in her profound obedience to Anarchist, and she was a true mother to a son of salvation.
and it can be seen that Abigail and her husband Dana lit the third flame with their covenant to give Ezekiel to the Lord before he was born, dedicating him utterly to the Lord, and thus the third flame also was lit by a covenant to give their child to Anakis. And in this third flame, the conditions grew worse because now there were nations and conquered peoples forced into war and slavery and the satisfaction of possessions, all of which was not according to the covenant of Abraham. And I strengthened my people for these times by establishing the holy order in preparation and by bringing to definition each of the seven foundations of Shabuah with my servants Melchizedek and Zedekedelebab. And in the third flame, it became necessary for there to be set in place a process of protecting the vision of Israel that sprang out of the Abrahamic covenant and to fill the need for the future strengthening of my people. And I had Ezekiel establish the 22 parameters that when lived would protect and enlarge the vision of true Israel. And it was under these special conditions that I came into the world to live as a man among the children of my father, and I was able to fulfill my vision, both as savior and redeemer of all mankind. And I am the shepherd of both mankind and creation, and a priest after the order of Melchizedek. And now we come to the fourth and final flame of the love of my father. And when the Lord said these words, the spirit swept over me to tell me and caused me to know profoundly just what was before me in the urn. The Lord Mozart, the Lamb of God, is our shepherd now, in the beginning of the fourth flame, and he loves his sheep, and he is completely capable of taking care of his sheep, and protecting, and teaching, and healing them, and our Lord holding a shepherd's crook is before us, and now what he is going to say will not be reciting history, but addressing us in our present moments of need. And the Lord said, you can be sure that I will be your faithful shepherd to guide the people of my flock from this day until the end of time. And I will walk with my people in all their present moments and we will live and dwell together. And we together will not fail to bring about the will and desires of my father. And now in this fourth flame that brings the course of the world back to the edge of eternity so as to complete the circle, the need for the power of righteousness will be much expanded and more urgent than at any time of the world. And those who are at this time receiving their instructions from Shekah have risen up like an abominable thing to sweep the earth with blasphemies and to enslave all the people and to speak cruel cool words with evil behaviors against Anakis and his purposes for his creations. And so now at this time, all three of the righteous foundations must be firmly set in place. Reference number 315. The 12 way marks of Jeshurun, the seven foundations of Shabua, and the 22 parameters that safeguard the vision of true Israel. By those who embrace the task of opening up the fourth flame to the peoples of the world, and the way has been carefully prepared before my people by the prophets and by the first son of redemption in the fourth flame. And so now I will tell you somewhat of that which has transpired between the third and fourth flames in regards to the loving kindness of my father. The people of Zadok became accustomed to living in the wilderness, and during the seven generations before they found Gokar Harim the first. They, as a people and a culture, seven themselves in desert living. And when they were informed that a great watch was to take place to call forth the birth of Messiah, they migrated into the town settlements surrounding Jerusalem. And they were oath takers in their practice of purity. So they began to be called Nazarites or Nazarenes. And wherever they lived, they formed separate enclaves and they found it hard to adapt to life in towns and cities, especially Jerusalem with all the struggles by the princes to attain dominance over their fellows. And when they found a car and were needed in the watch, they found it difficult to walk intermingled in the way of the people, and the Essene quarter in Jerusalem offered them solace in their privacy, reference number 316. See appendix for a map showing the Essene quarter in Jerusalem 
and the location of the Last Supper being in the Essene quarter. And when Zabdi had brought forth the last of the third flame, many came from Malasa and from the wilderness settlements to rotate into the watch. And these people were a very great source of spiritual strength with their diligence and steadfastness and in their knowledge of the scriptures from their constant study. And as it has been written, they succeeded in calling forth the Messiah and in praying and supporting him all through his ministry. And they all considered him one of their own. And Joseph the Baptist was an Essene who also came out from their settlement near Yavis. And the Lord continued and he said, I raised up James, my brother, with a vision to see that the fledgling Gentile mission would not falter and for him to be a spiritual guide for those in the religion of Shabua. And the princes of Jerusalem slew James without a cause, save one of jealousy. And when they did whatsoever they chose to me, the Erechodeshi were restrained from coming to my rescue by the solemn prayers of the people of my church. But when they slew James, there was no such restraints. And the Erechodeshi rebelled and refused to reign on Israel for many years. And the Jordan almost dried up. And the Romans, who had thought to become wealthy and add to their power with the acquisition of Israel, were disappointed with the drought, and there were seen Roman roads across the barren places of the Salt Sea because it was drying up. And when they killed James and denied the church his leadership, some of the traditions of the Levitical law were brought into what was supposed to be the religion of Shabuah. Principally, it was the use of blood as it applied to salvation and redemption. Hence, James' decree, reference 317, Acts chapter 15, verses 19 through 20, which says, Wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them, which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them that they obtain from pollutions of idols, in parentheses, blood sacrifice, and from fornication, in parentheses, producing Nephilim by blood, and from things strangled, in parentheses, to retain all the blood in that which is burned, and from blood, in parentheses, in association with salvation and redemption. And it came to pass, killing James prepared the way for one, who I call Alexander of Shekah, reference number 318. Alexander, from the Greek, number 223, means one who defends the will of man. This is the name the Lord applied to Constantine. And this man ravaged the land with violence and oppressed with cruelty, and blood was poured out everywhere, and he received his instructions directly from Shekab. And it came to pass that this evil man defined the final form of the Gentile mission, and he laid solid foundations for the establishment of the great and abominable church. And he was an accomplished sorcerer and built into his church the worship of death and blood, thereby dismissing the life of Moza and the connection to the law and the testimony. And because of this, for many centuries, the adversary had his way upon the earth with slavery and war and death and darkness. And Babylon of old was revived to flourish in its fullness from that time forward and the satisfaction of possessions and dominance over your fellows was magnified all over the earth to the extent that it was thought that the evils of ancient Babylon would consume all that was righteous in the world. And this evil continued unabated and unopposed for many generations. And the peoples of the earth groaned under the weight of it, and all heaven was distressed and cried out. And creation was distraught to be the home of man in the face of it. And in the midst of these terrible conditions continuing on, there was a Gentile woman who was quiet and meek in her many trials, like our mother Ida, and much like Abigail and Dana, the parents of Ezekiel, when they stood upon the wall of Jerusalem and made a vow to give their child to Anarchus. And this Gentile woman also made a vow to give her child to the Lord before it was born. And you will see with the last three of the four flames that they were lit by a woman who gave a son to Anarchist, and they all were sons of salvation and redemption. 
and this woman is dear to my heart, and she was treated with much cruelty arising out of Shekah in the attempt to destroy the beginning of the fourth and final flame. And when her child was born, it was a little son, and I performed the birthing ceremony, being accompanied by Mikael, the prince of Shabuah. And I named the little son Raphael, reference number 319, number 7501, and number 7495, because he would bring healing to Israel, and he would bring healing to the Erico de she, in the alienation between man and creation, brought on by the combined evils of Babylon and the abominable church, and he would set in place and establish the righteousness that it would take for Israel and the righteous to come to my aid and heal me in my burdens. And when he was four years old, he learned the meaning of repentance and found out who I am to him. And I named him Gokar Harim because he would subdue principalities and powers and put at defiance the armies of nations to enliven the conscience of mankind to know right and wrong by renewing the division of the waters and he has done all I have asked of him during his walk on the earth. And when he was 14 years old, and it was time for his coming of age, he came to me and fasted and prayed for 40 days. And he walked with me every day. And he praised me continually from deep in his soul. And he hungered and thirsted for light and understanding. And he studied and asked questions. And I taught him by my spirit. And I appeared personally before him in the light of my presence. And I asked him to perform an important task for me. And I named him Ben Elam, the brother of trees. And he will be one who will petition the Elam of the heights. Reference number 320. Trees. See page 8. Melchizedek and Melchizedek by Kobolski, to be my helpers. And after he considered all these things, he returned to his tabernacle there in the forest. And he knelt before me, and we made a vow together. And I asked him to, in the course of time, to bring the law to Israel. And if he would do this, I would bring Israel to the law. And in this task, we would work together as brothers. And we made a vow together, and he swept up his life with his hands in a gesture of giving his life to me, and he poured it out between my feet, and he was very young. And he did not understand the full meaning of all this, but he was determined to live his life in such a way to bring my desires for him to their fullness. Now there are those who have a symbolic name of Ephraim, reference number 321. Number 669, double fruit. And the name Ephraim in the house of Israel comes from his father Joseph, reference number 322, number 3084, let him add. And Ephraim was born of the Egyptian wife of Joseph, and he was raised in the world in the midst of Gentiles. And the symbolic name for the Gentiles who were charged with bringing the truth of the heritage of the vision of true Israel also came from a father Joseph. Reference number 323, Joseph Smith, Jr. And they had Gentile mothers and were raised in the world among Gentiles. And Isaiah prophesied that the Gentiles would perform this. And he calls some of them the drunkards of Ephraim. Reference number 324, referring to the restoration movements. Because they were not satisfied with the new wine of Revelation, was sought out and laid claim to the old wine of the Levitical law, and they wanted temples, and to arm themselves, and to use blood for atonement. In this heritage, they followed from the Gentile mission, instead of seeking out the ways of true Israel among those dispersed upon the promised land, as I required of them. And their task in this symbolic way was to bring by their example and practice all of the parameters of true Israel and to assist Israel that they may gather the Lord's people and establish Zion that was called Ma'in in ancient times. And they were to call forth a holy relationship with the dispersed of Israel first upon this land of promise and the center of their calling 
was to impact the peoples of the nations to accept and respect the remnant of Israel and to admire their righteousness, but still resided abundantly with them. An anarchist wanted these Gentiles to teach their people to love Israel who had been scattered out upon the earth and who had possessed the Ark of the Covenant and they would have failed, but I preserved a remnant among them who were led by Ben Elam. In Isaiah, reference 325, Isaiah chapter 28, verse 1 through 4, liken them unto a beautiful flower at the head of a fat valley, the fat valley being the opportunity for them to produce abundant fruit for anarchists. But he called them a fading flower because the poison water of the Levitical law caused them to wilt. And I named him in person with my own voice with our hands together upon a majestic cedar tree and told him he was a brother to the trees, which is said Ben Elim. Reference number 326. Number 1121 and number 362 from number 352, Trees. And I gave him this name because he would be one who is mighty and strong and cast down upon the earth by the hand, standing before holy altars with the elements of righteousness to intervene on my behalf. Reference number 327, Isaiah chapter 28, verse 1 through 13. And he performed many tasks in this way for me to prepare the way for my people Israel in their task at the end of days during the times of tribulations. And he stood before altars of my father in my behalf and at my request to bless my heart and to comfort my father in many ways. And he reestablished Shabua with only my spirit to guide him as prophesied by Elijah. And he performed Shabua for 40 years and was steadfast and would not turn aside from it. And he brought forth by Aram the book of remembrance as foretold by Malachi. And principal purpose for this is to restore the original Torah of the law and the testimony. And he reestablished the alliance of heaven so that all the righteous for the rest of the course of the earth would have the resources of heaven and earth joined together to bring my people to be triumphant. And he called forth that my arm should be made bare before the eyes of all nations, which will cause the fall of Babylon, and great will be the fall of it. And there will be a new earth where the people of light come to their day of dominion. And Benny Lim has stood in the presence of my father Anakis, and he has done all things according to his will and according to his command. Reference 328, Genesis chapter 14, verse 31, Inspired Version. And he has called upon Anarchist at my direction and asked him to view his creation and decided what he would do with it. And immediately during this request, my father set about to judge the nations and fires were seen among the nations of the earth. And he has stood up to the influences of Ezra of Shekah and prepared himself with repentance so that I was able to overcome evil and teach what the law is and how to read the tablet of Gabriel. And he has brought to the world the true knowledge of the character of my father, Anarchist. And he has taught the people to accept reproval and to love repentance. And no other high priest has done this for me. And he taught the people that they, each and every one, can know me for themselves. And in this way, he has restored the essence of the tabernacle. And at my direction, he has joined with the righteous to reestablish the division of the earth as it was in the days of Enoch, and it was accomplished in 22 days. And he reestablished the covenant of Abraham by the spirit only before he knew by Urm what it was. And ben threw down to the earth the element of righteousness every three and a half years to request that I open the seven seals, vials, and trumps, and it has been done. And that which was exposed to the light was the truths that evil had hidden in order to deceive the hearts of mankind among the nations. And I gave him a white stone and had him set in it the place that I designated from the foundation of the earth 
and the white stone is for all those who overcome their sins. And written within the white stone is a new name for my father to come forth in the end times. Reference number 329. Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. Hidden manna is what is seen by Aaron. The new name for God. See Revelation chapter 3, verse 12. And the new name for my father is Anarchist. I am loving kindness. And I wrote it in the stone and upon the heart of my servant, Benny Lim. And now it can be seen that with all these things and more, the way has been carefully prepared for the house of Israel and the righteous to move out with an overflowing power of love, especially after my arm is revealed and the old things go away and the new things are revealed at the fall of the sinful city and the church of it. And I didn't know what to think of all that the Lord said, but I held my silence and told his words to all assembled. And the Lord is going to continue to speak, and he is saying, It is important that the people, especially those who are the true Israel, walk on the twelve way marks of the law, and that they purify with repentance, so they can experience the seven foundations of Shabua, and that they keep within the parameters that safeguard the vision of true Israel. And the righteous in community with Benny Lamb have called forth the arm of the Lord to come forth at the time Anarchist directs. And the people of the fourth flame, as they move out to accomplish their task before Anarchist, will be much like it was for Zadok, because they must teach the people how to be ready to preside over the earth when their day of holy dominion arrives. And during the ensuing generations after the smoke of Babylon ascends up forevermore, they must teach and minister to the people and prepare their hearts in purity so they can overcome the conditions that have come upon the people because the people have seven themselves with the things of the world as they have walked in the way of the people and it will be difficult for them. And like those at Sakaka, the righteous who have seven themselves in the wilderness can be a strong help. And these among Israel who have found the means to be unspotted from the world will be endowed with compassion to heal and comfort the weary saints and to do all things according to his will and desires so that many will find their way to come to Malim. And it will come to pass that when the world is perishing for those who have walked in Babylon, my people will be calmed by their very holy shepherd, and in their hour of need, the wayward can be reclaimed if they choose to come into the fold of the shepherd. And they can heal the earth and the souls of men and bring comfort to my father and help me stand as the son of my father with my burdens. And they shall go forth as barriers to bury the impurities that came from the disobedient and lustful upon the families of the earth and take them out of the sight of my father and we shall walk together and i will plead with you face to face to show kindness and mercy upon the destitute and lost but my people led by true israel must be diligent in their purity and the sons of zadok have prepared the way reference number 330 both the ones of the third flame and the righteous with ben elam in the fourth flame they are called sons of Zadok because he turned Ezekiel's parameters of true Israel from a theory into a way of life and supplied them with the community rule and the culture that keeps the law. And my people must decide in fervent dedication to repent before they have to so they can be diligent to abandon all evil and every dwelling place of Semehaza and Asael and shun as a shameful thing all and every Dakar Darchi, so that by walking in holiness they can answer when my father calls and say, Here am I, Lord, send me. And my people must deny every lust of the world and each and every influence that makes me hesitant to speak to them in their hearts by the voice of my spirit. And they must follow me as the sheep of my flock who are intent to follow, the lead of their shepherd into a dry and thirsty land because I know where the water is and I am the living water and know that all the Erko de she will obey my voice because they know that I love my sheep. And those who would be shepherds together with me as brothers 
must love the sheep in the depths of their hearts. And they must feed my sheep with compassion and the love of repentance and with the skills of being taught to be led by my spirit. And they must teach the children how to learn of my ways so they can follow their gentle shepherd to be the everlasting possessions of Anarchus. And above all, my fellow shepherds must embrace the truth and feed my sheep to know wisdom and bestow upon them, starting at an early age, how to have the gift of discernment. And this comes from both a father and a mother. Reference number 331. Enoch, chapter 3, verse 7 through 10. And if you do all these things, I will command the Erico de she to move into a new place, and they will begin to transform back into Eden and enter to return between the oaks of Pathak before the righteous do to minister from there, being greatly empowered for the sake of the righteous, and their participation in the alliance of heaven will become endowed from on high, and we will walk together with the little children as one person walks with another in the same manner as it was just before the city of Enoch returned to Eden. Reference number 332, Enoch chapter 15, verse 119. And the Erekodeshi will invite the righteous to cross over, and they will beckon to their loved ones day and night to draw them into the holiness of Ma'in, and the angels of the fourth station will diligently prepare themselves into companies with assigned task of ministry and protection, being fully capable and obedient to the smallest wish of Anarchus. And I see the angels of the fourth station, and they are preparing for their holy task just like us, and washing their hair, and putting on their holy garments, and they have carefully assessed their assigned task, and are of one heart and mind in their missions among the elect of God in their times of need. And the Lord continued saying, And they will be in attendance among the righteous all over the earth by their thousands and thousands of thousands, and nothing will be able to hold them back, as it would be with the waves of the sea on a windy and stormy day. And the Lord is saying, It is my will and advice to all those in the 23rd community that you begin as soon as it becomes expedient, just prior to the arm of the Lord, to form councils of communities so they may learn how to make important decisions without discord and by common consent. And when the arm of the Lord is revealed, a council in grand assembly must be called to consider the will of Anarchist regarding the ministry and calling of Gokar Haram the fourth. Reference number 333. Read First Aki chapter 13, verse 35 through 61. And you all must follow all that has been established in righteousness in these considerations so harmony and peace may prevail. For in those days, the wicked will not be able to agree among themselves on any matter that points toward the good. And by a common voice and a common heart, my father will respect the decision of the eternal counsel, and he will abundantly bless his people to empower them. And we all together in our alliance will come together to utterly fulfill all the desires of my father, Anarchus. And when the arm of the Lord is revealed and the presence of the Lord must needs be acknowledged by all mankind, then starting after the emergence of Gokar Harim IV, after the seventh generation begins to born among my people at that time, they must enter into a great watch to call forth Asaph, the prophet, who will join with the righteous in his strength to hasten the gathering of the people. So be urgent, for the time is short, and the foundation for the fourth flame has been carefully laid in all things, and the knowledge has been given, and the instructions are clear concerning the parameters for true Israel. And the law is now before you, and it is the treasure of the righteous in Zion, the tablet of Gabriel and the Urim of ben Elim and the tablet of the holy city. And you are to guard the truth with your lives and do not allow any controversy over the treasure or it will be taken from you. And now you know why Moses would not allow it to go to Sinai and why Eleazar hid it up 
and why Zadok would not allow it to come into Jerusalem. And the Lord ended his teaching. And I said aloud, O Lord, how can we say how grateful we are? For all you have done for us, our words are too small. We can only show our gratefulness by the living of our lives. Thank you, Lord. And while Gabrielle gave the law definition and Jacob put the law into all creation and Messiah put the law into the souls of all men, the sons of redemption of the fourth flame will bring the law in its fullness into the very present moment of every person to ever be born upon the earth. And this will begin with the arm of the Lord and culminate with the final judgment. And because of this, they are the Essenes of the fourth flame, who by way of their calling will be the standard by which all men will be judged. And the light of the urn in the course of the world will shine upon those brought into the presence of the love of Anarchist. And the fourth flame is anchored on the edge of eternity, thereby bringing the children of Anarchist back to Eden and their beginning and the inhabitants of the holy city of Zion will fall upon the necks of those of Zion of old in their joy and love for one another, in the rejoicing in the second coming called forth by Elisheba and Karasiad. This concludes the Book of Remembrance of Moses, the Tablet of Gabriel, Chapter 17. Shalom, family.